It was an exciting night of racing here at Tri-County with a smart modified tour. I'm Noah Cornelius, joined by JB. You might recognize him from the flag stand. Now tonight, it was a story of two Bobbies, but we're gonna talk about one that you might not expect, Bobby Meesmer Jr. JB, what did you think of the performance? Bobby Meesmer Jr., listen, it is freezing now all of a sudden, but he put on a show and it was hot. He'd come out of the corner ninth one lap and come up to like third next lap. I mean, out of nowhere. I'm blistering run. Good for him. I'm very happy for that team. Kevin Hughes in the RE14 uh, car. Uh, they really put on a show and stole the show uh, there toward the end. On that deep ring. There he is. Hey, let's see it's out of <laughs> I told you, he stole the show out here on the track. He steals the show here on the debrief. The man put on a clinic tonight there with the last 10 laps to go. He got up there, had a hard fight with uh, second place there. Uh, I believe it was Jake Crum. And another one, Jake Crum, that put on a, a heck of a show. Uh, there goes Carson. But uh, no, Jake Crum, he ended up you know, stealing the show as well. Him and Bobby Meesmer, I mean, both of them. Uh, you know, Jake Crum, he's not uh, a, a you know, a modified character that's been, you know, with the sport here as of late. He's a late model guy. Of course. But he dives into the modifieds here with Paul French from up north. And uh, he, you know, he really made Paul French very proud tonight uh, with that, third, I believe, uh, fourth, fifth place finish. Now, you talked about Bobby. We talked about Jake Crum. Now it's time to talk about the other Bobby, the NASCAR Hall of Famer, Bobby Labonte, returning to victory lane here tonight. How about that? I am very happy to see Bobby Labonte bounce back. He's had a tough bout the last few races, uh, even in the SRX series. Leading into this here, uh, he didn't have a good showing at North Wilkesboro. Hard hit there, uh, even a harder hit at Motor Mile the next day. So uh, to have a finish like that and then come here and actually you know, put on a heck of a, a, clinic, a clinic as well uh, and come out victorious was awesome to see especially with uh, you know the, the finishes he has had. So that team, they, they earned that one tonight, big time. Now from a veteran driver to a little bit of a younger one, Carson Lofton is still in position to make the final three at South Boston pending next week. Yep. Let's talk about Carson Lofton, his performance tonight. Yeah, uh, Carson Lofton there at first was not doing uh, Carson Lofton things. Uh, he was back in the back. Uh, Brandon Ward, uh, which is, had a comfortable second place, uh, was also in the back. Joy Coulter, which is also battling Carson and Hetty to make it into the Smart Three, he was in the back. So I'm thinking, what's going on here? Burt Meyer's doing what Burt Meyer's needs to do. He's up front, running second. I believe he got himself a stage a point in that. Um, but Brandon Ward and Joy Coulter, they come down here on pit road, make some adjustments. Didn't do too well. They stayed in the back. I think Brandon moved up a little bit, but Carson Lawson, he comes into the pits with him. He comes out and he ends up going to the front. He was battling up there with his dad, Brian Lofton, for uh, fourth, third place. Uh, he was looking like he was going to get a podium finish, uh, Carson was, but he ended up finishing, I believe, uh, fourth or fifth, uh, sixth actually, yeah. So uh, he finished ahead of not only uh, Brandon Ward, Joy Coulter, and Caleb Hetty. So he's, he's in position to make it in that smart three going in South Boston. That's right, and the penultimate South Boston race will determine the smart three. Be there South Boston October 14th to see who makes it.